First story. My jealous wife framed a woman and ruined her whole life, then got sued and lost. I had to pay, and I am resentful of her. I don't know how to move past this. FWIW this is not a post asking for any legal or financial advice. We already have a lawyer and have financial help. No offense to Reddit, but I'd rather not get any legal advice from a forum. But I'm okay getting relationship advice, it seems. As the title states, my wife was recently sued. She lost, and we had to pay. The money is a significant amount for us. We didn't have much in savings or our emergency fund to begin with, and both of those accounts are now empty. My current problem is trying to move past the resentment and anger I'm feeling towards my wife. Until now, I've always felt like we were a partnership in our marriage. But since I'm the breadwinner, I can't help but feel like I'm spending my money on something that isn't my fault. I've had no problem paying the mortgage or taking care of the various financial burdens that come with being a married homeowner. However, I have been the only one to put money aside in our savings and other accounts to prepare for an emergency, like a totaled car, someone losing their job, medical bills, or an act of God. Not a stupid lawsuit where I know my wife is guilty. She has a part-time job and doesn't make much money, but she pays for smaller things when she can like groceries and some random bills, and she does take care of a lot of cooking, cleaning and caring for our pets. What did my wife do? Note. I had no idea this was going on while it was happening. She used LinkedIn to find her former ex-best friend. She ended up creating a realistic-looking fake LinkedIn profile with a vague occupation of recruiter. My wife ended up sending this ex-best friend, Laura, a few messages pretending to be a recruiter in her line of work. Laura finally responded, thinking that this recruiter was real. My wife wanted her phone number, but Laura gave her a personal email address instead. My wife created a second fake LinkedIn profile and started to send messages to people with similar titles as Laura at her company. These messages said derogatory things about Laura, a mixture of truthful but embarrassing things, and just fabricated bullshit to make Laura look bad. Her manager got one of these messages that claimed that Laura was a heavy drug user. Laura's manager talked to her about these messages, and he felt like the messages were bizarre and seemed like someone was trying to troll or harass Laura. Well, the Laura team had her back and helped her save these messages. Not only that, but Laura requested that she be drug tested anyway to provide further evidence that she was clean. My wife didn't know this at this point, but Laura was pregnant. Several of her co-workers, including her manager, testified on Laura's behalf. Using the personal email address she got from the fake recruiter profile, she was able to find a few social media platforms Laura was on and was able to figure out her husband's name. She did some more internet sleuthing and found Laura's husband on Facebook. Laura's husband didn't have much on his Facebook profile, but you could see his business email address on it. My wife sent him an email claiming that Laura was cheating on him. The husband confronted Laura about this email, and Laura encouraged him to keep responding to this person and saving the messages, as well as to start asking specific questions about this supposed affair. My wife thought she was being clever and ended up telling the husband that Laura was cheating on him during the work week. She even gave him specific dates. What she didn't realize was that Laura had something turned on in Google Maps, where it kept years' worth of historical GPS data. Some of the dates my wife gave him also happened to be days where they both worked from home together. She also ended up giving him dates while they were on vacation together. Laura had her husband keep responding as much as possible to my wife and back up all correspondence. My wife was able to find out when and where the baby shower was going to be. One of Laura's friends had created a public registry for her and had the invitation online. My wife decided to show up unannounced the baby shower took place in a semi-public place. They had rented out an area connected to the public business. She did not make herself known immediately. Instead, she looked for patrons who were entering and exiting the rented out room. She was able to get the attention of a few guests that had never met her and tried to gossip about Laura. My wife was telling people that Laura didn't actually know who the father was, among other things. This was at an event that her husband was at as well. The word got back around to Laura and she spotted my wife and apparently immediately put together all the pieces of what happened. I'm leaving a fair amount of information out. My wife was able to find phone numbers, social media accounts, and emails for other people in Laura's circle, and sent them messages about Laura on multiple occasions. All the messages were trying to paint Laura in an extremely derogatory light. All the events I've mentioned so far took place over a year or so. My wife didn't think to mask her IP address so it was pretty easy to find out that all of these made-up messages came from the same IP address as ours. Many of Laura's friends and family testified on her behalf. Laura had everyone save as much digital evidence as possible, and it was a lot. 
Laura and her husband hired a lawyer and decided to sue my wife. They had ample evidence against her. All the saved messages, close friends, and even her manager spoke on her behalf. She showed that she went to see a therapist once all the harassment started because she was depressed and anxious. She showed that she and her husband went to counseling after the accusations of her cheating. She even went above and beyond and had more drug tests done to show she was clean, and my wife's accusations were 100% false. She even had a paternity test done to show that my wife was again wrong and chose to lie. I honestly felt awful for Laura. There were lots of tears on her end. You could tell how much emotional stress she had gone through. She said that being pregnant during the majority of this was absolutely horrific and that she was worried the stress and anxiety would somehow hurt her baby. She was pained that her one and only baby shower was ruined by my wife, and that was something that could never be truly repaid or made up for, and that my wife's harassment continued even after Laura gave birth and was trying to manage a newborn child. My wife has never done anything this crazy before. I knew she could be a little petty and jealous of others, especially people she used to be friends with in the past, but it was only talk no action. We've had a very happy marriage. Otherwise, we rarely fight, have a lot in common, and have a lot of fun together. But she really messed up this time. I don't know how to move forward. I know someone is going to suggest therapy, but I really want to start building up an emergency fund again. We've been pretty screwed financially for a while. When my wife was sued by her former best friend, I emptied out all of our savings and sold a few things to pay for everything. I need help managing my resentment towards my wife and moving past this. Funds are low, and we can't afford therapy right now. What can we do to move forward? Update. By the time I was able to respond to my first post, it had become locked. I read everyone's replies and thank you to those who responded with good advice. I got a lot of DMs and I wasn't able to respond to everyone, but I did read your messages. However, I did not appreciate the many comments that simply insulted my wife. I know she messed up and I'm still very angry at her, but I want to believe she can heal and become a better person. Also, some of the DMs I got were extremely weird and hateful towards women in general. Like stuff you see on the incel tears, sub y'all need more help than me and my wife. There were some common questions I wanted to address to provide additional clarification. How did she avoid jail? I only mentioned the civil case since I felt it was the most appropriate to write about because I was originally angry about our financial situation. There was also a criminal case. Our lawyer thought she would originally have to go to jail for three months. However, we were able to get her punishment to be community service instead. She has a lot of community service hours to fill within a year, and she will also be getting visits from a PO. Laura and her husband did file restraining orders against her. I honestly can't blame them for that. It helped my wife that she had a clean record and has family that works in law enforcement. I want her to finish those community service hours first before we talk about her working more hours to help pay me back. Why did she do this to Laura? That is a good question. I asked her this multiple times over the past several months to try to understand what this woman did to my wife. She would tell me that Laura deserved everything horrible that my wife did to her. That Laura was a SHTTY person, a narcissist, a liar, and just overall a scumbag. But she never really gave specific examples. I've been pressing her for more information, and when she told me some specifics, it made me feel sick to my stomach. Not because of what Laura did, but because of how far my wife decided to go due to some petty things that happened in their friendship. Their friendship ended about 8-9 years ago. They had been friends since early in high school, and it was over a man they had both briefly dated. My wife dated Matt for a few months. She broke up with him because she thought that Matt had feelings for Laura. Laura said she didn't want to date Matt because he had dated my wife. My wife decided to test her friend Laura's loyalty and told Laura she had her blessing to date Matt. Laura and Matt ended up dating for a few months. My wife stuck around while they were dating, and once they broke up, my wife told Laura that she had failed a loyalty test. They fought, and ultimately, it was Laura who decided to end the friendship. Note. In case it's not clear, Laura's current husband is not Matt. Secondly, I was able to get some information from her about what inspired her to do this since their friendship had ended so long ago. My wife said she happened to see by chance, not by stalking Laura at a restaurant about one and a half two years ago, and it looked like Laura had lost a lot of weight and was fit. My wife and I are both fairly overweight, and apparently Laura used to be overweight too. My wife admitted that she felt angry that Laura had lost a lot of weight while she had never been able to. My wife was also insulting Laura and said that she doesn't make a pretty thin person and that her new muscular body was too masculine. She also insulted Laura's husband's looks and physique as well. 
I saw both Laura and her husband in person on multiple occasions. They both look like normal, attractive people who obviously work out. I could also tell my wife was irritated when she saw Laura at the courthouse the first time, and you could barely tell that Laura had even had a baby. My wife admitted that she just wanted to do some snooping to try to find out that Laura wasn't doing well in life. She found the opposite and was jealous of Laura's success. She first found out both of their job titles. They both work at tech companies with some sort of engineering title and their estimated salaries by using something called Glassdoor. And if that's accurate, then both Laura and her husband make really good money. She also saw a photo on Facebook of Laura and her husband standing in front of what appeared to be their very beautiful and large home. She said she was angry because she knew that Laura wasn't deserving of any of this. She proceeded to insult Laura about how she's not that smart, not pretty, and not responsible. She claimed that all Laura did through college was do drugs, drink, have SX with anything that had a PP, skip class, and fail a lot. My wife said that she's the type who would cheat on her husband, that she's manipulative, and is always up to something, etc. Both Laura and her husband seemed very sad and exhausted throughout the whole ordeal. I never picked up on anything sinister from Laura at all. I felt absolutely awful for her. I felt extreme shame and embarrassment whenever I was in the same room with Laura and her husband. I don't think I was ever able to make direct eye contact with either of them. So, yeah, I was expecting Laura to have done something truly evil or sinister in the past. And that just wasn't the case. Does she feel remorseful? I want to say yes, she does. She has been really depressed since this was all finalized. However, I can't help but think she's sad only because she got caught. She hasn't directly said anything that would lead me to believe she is truly remorseful. She's still angry at Laura for escalating to the point of a criminal and civil case. She feels that Laura overreacted. My wife believes every horrible thing she said about Laura. She's convinced that Laura is some kind of alcoholic or drug addict who cheats on her husband and is the type to lie and cheat her way to the top of her career. And somehow Laura is able to hide this from everyone in her life. My wife felt like she was trying to expose Laura for the monster that she is. She feels that Laura pressing charges and suing her is additional proof that Laura is vindictive. My hope is that she has time to think while she is doing her community service hours over the next year. I think she feels bad that I had to empty out our accounts and sell some things to come up with the money. I talked to her about working more hours once she has finished community service, and she agreed. Are you going to get divorced? The thought has crossed my mind, but we've been together for so long, and I still love her despite this disgusting thing she has done. I can't see my life without her. But I know, and I'm having a hard time admitting this to myself, that if she doesn't improve or learn a lesson from this mess, then I can't be with her anymore. A lot of people mentioned that if she can do this type of thing to an ex-friend, then she can do the same to an ex-husband. This has me worried. I'd like to believe she wouldn't go nuclear on me if we did file for divorce. I'll be taking precautions in case I have to defend myself in the future. Why is she only working part-time? She is a licensed masseuse and works at a really nice salon or spa. Her hourly wage is pretty high, but she hasn't been able to get the hours she wants at the spa she works at. She could probably get a more full-time position at a different spa, but with a slightly lower hourly wage, which would still bring in more income than what she is doing now. She really likes the place she is at and doesn't want to leave, but I may pressure her to full-time work elsewhere to help pay me back and refill our emergency fund once she is done with community service. At the moment, she is on board with helping me put money back into our savings accounts. What about therapy? I know we need this, both as a couple and as individuals, to deal with this mess. I talked to her about this, and she doesn't seem totally sold on the idea of therapy. I've expressed that I think it would help both of us, and she seems indifferent at this point. I've talked to her parents, who are really angry or disappointed in her. They basically begged me not to leave her over this. I told her parents that I think therapy would help both of us, but I can't afford it now. They offered to pay for couples therapy, but that is as much as they would be able to afford, so it's a start. I know my wife will need individual therapy. And if that means I stop going to couples therapy, so she can get the one-on-one -on -one help she needs, so be it. I'm not ready to call my wife a psychopath, as many of the commenters did in the last post. I think she got carried away and thought she was trying to expose someone she truly believed was a bad person. I'm heavily leaning towards the fact that she has had some sort of mental breakdown and focused all of her energy on this one woman and her life. I'm not going to give up on my wife yet. It's very possible that she has some underlying mental illness that could very well be treated with therapy or medication. How much money was she sued for? I don't want to give specific numbers, but it will take about four or five years to get back to where we were prior to this happening. If my wife takes on full-time work 
after she is done with community service and hands over the majority of her paycheck. It may take less than four years. Are kids involved? No, we don't have kids and are not planning on having any. What next? That's what I need help with. I've sat down with my wife a few times since the post, and I can feel some resistance coming from her about starting couple therapy. I think she's irritated at her parents for offering to pay for therapy for us. She has stated that she would rather us solve our problems together without interference from someone she doesn't know. She's afraid she isn't going to like any therapist we find, and that the therapist will attack her throughout our sessions. I've tried explaining to her that the therapist isn't there to blame anyone, that they would try to help us, and that it would be a safe space for her to talk and vent about whatever she needs. I've brought up the idea of therapy every night since the post, and each time she has had an excuse along the lines of it won't help, the therapist will gang up on her. She isn't going to like the therapist, or the therapist won't like her, or that we can solve our own problems at home. TLDR. I answered a bunch of questions I wasn't able to get to before my first post was locked. But I really need help pushing my wife to get therapy. She is resistant and isn't convinced it will help us. Second story. OP's long-lost biological half-sister wants to contact him. But OP is hesitant. I am 24. Recently did a DNA and ancestry test. I won't name the brand because I don't want this to seem like an ad. I was adopted by my parents when I was 7 years old. I don't really remember much, if anything, of my life prior to being adopted. But I know that I was neglected, to say the least. Just to put that context out there, I've never really had intentions of meeting my biological family. I've always thought they obviously didn't care about me, so why should I waste time caring for them? When I did the DNA test, I knew there was a chance that I would be matched with a close genetic relation. But I never had any intention of messaging any of them. Even though my parents have been supportive of me finding a connection to my biological family. Anyway, the DNA test came back a few days ago, and I matched with someone who apparently is my biological half-sister. She sent me a long message explaining that she's been searching for me for a while, and that she would love to speak and help me build a picture of my biological family. She said that she lived with me, my dad her stepdad, and our mom when I was young. She was seven years older than me, and when I was removed from foster care, she moved in with her dad. I read the message, but I haven't responded. And in all honesty, I don't plan to. It's nice that I know someone's out there who cares for me, but I still don't want anything to do with my biological family. My brother also adopted Oliver, says that I am being selfish by not responding. He says I should think about what my sister might be thinking, but I don't think he understands since he has always kept a link to his family. We ended up getting into a huge, stupid argument over it. And he says that if I wasn't going to respond, I shouldn't have even done the test because now it just gives my sister false hope. I told him he didn't understand what I was going through because he never lost connection with his family. And he said I'm an idiot for thinking that. We were both probably equally rude. I'm not trying to paint him as a bad person. We had a dumb fight. So Ada for refusing to respond to my sister. Comments. Okay childhood 9 and 774. NTA. Your feelings about your family connections are exactly that yours. If you are not ready to be in contact with your half-sister, that's fine. Maybe you will someday, but it's ultimately your choice. Your brother has no business pushing you. OP thanks. I genuinely think my brother doesn't understand how stressful it is, because he has always had that link to his family. Doilantano 6th and 417. She remembers you, and apparently has been looking for you. Can't you just send a message saying you ended up okay? But for the moment you'd like some space. It'll reassure her and you won't have to be in touch with someone you don't want to be in touch with. Now, Suzu Susio. That would be the kindest way to handle it the sister, and her own pain from past events. If he was seven at adoption, and the sister was fourteen, she would have invested much more emotionally in reconnecting. But if he's not wanting that at this point in his life, that's fine too. But the idea of messaging and reassuring the sister, and explaining his current feelings would be a wonderful thing to do for her. Judgment. NTA. Update. Four days later. Thank you all for sharing your points of view. I read almost all of the comments and appreciate all the advice and kind words most people sent out. I decided in the end to take the advice of most of you and send a message to my sister, which said, Hello name, thank you for reaching out, and I appreciate you sharing that you have been searching for me. As you know, I was taken into foster care at age 5, which I don't remember much of. I was adopted by my mom and dad when I was 7 years old into a loving family. I have been cared for greatly by them and I love them with all my heart. I have been to Name University, graduated with a first-class honors degree in education, and am currently working as a teacher. Although I appreciate you reaching out, 
I am not currently looking for any connection to my biological relatives at this time. I just wanted to send this message to let you know I am well and have had a happy life being part of my new family. Best of wishes, name. I think that message is alright and makes it clear that I am not looking for any connection. She has read the message but has not responded, although I don't expect her to. Thank you all again for your advice and help with dealing with this stressful situation. Comments. Mercury Lights. As much as I think you were an NTA, I'm glad you decided to do this. It does seem like the right thing to do. Sweet Potato 37. OP's sister was innocent in this situation, just like him. It makes me so pleased he messaged her, just so she knows he's safe and happy. She's probably been missing and searching for him for years. It is definitely the right thing to do. Estella Luna 92 Piano. I'm so glad that you decided to message her this once. Your message made it clear that you're not looking for a connection, but gave her the reassurance that you are living a good life. The best of both worlds. OP. Yeah, she literally just sent me a really nice message back, so I'm glad that I provided closure for her. Even though finding out I have a sister has been stressful and something I never expected in some ways, it's been nice to find out. Sister's response. Hello my name. It is so great to hear from you, and I am so pleased to hear how well you've gotten on. I completely understand and respect your decision about contacting your biological family. I also went to Nain University, but I imagine a few years before you did. It makes me so happy to know you've found an amazing family who was able to love you in the way that you deserve to be loved. I just wish I was able to be part of that life too. I got married last year and have a two-year-old son named Name. I hope one day you will feel open to meeting him. Although he's young, I've told him about you and how we used to play Peanut Butter Dog. Do you even remember that? Sending all my love. I have no clue what a peanut butter dog is or what that means, so don't ask me. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.